What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Small Biz. In today's video, we're going to talk about how the Kraken just added another $33 million worth of contracts for their lead remediation business. So the obvious question of this day is, now that we learn the $50 million ELOC is done, who in the fuck is selling the stock at $1.20? All that and more. Coming right up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy Monday to you. This is a huge video. I'm going to try to go as slow as I possibly can and review a number of stats. And as I just said at the open, not only did the Kraken add another $33 million of business that will start on the first of the year, which takes their pipeline, according to our estimates, north of $50 million looking out 12 to 18 months. We were told on Friday from Jason Assad, A-S-S-A-D, head of IR, a guy who I got along with before I stopped talking to all of them a few months ago when the CEO said, I want you out of the stock. Do it, do it. And I have my reasons for no longer maintaining any direct contact with those guys. But I'd like to start this video, and again, please give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, do whatever you got to do, say something below. This is not an effort to get a short squeeze going, but I will say this, respectfully, if you're shorting the stock here, I think you're signing a death sentence. You're asking for trouble. I'll be very surprised if they allow it to go under a dollar. And I'm going to explain before this video is over exactly what you should do and what Doug should do tomorrow if he's truly serious about getting the stock up to where shareholder value belongs. But this is not an effort to get a squeeze going. Our limit to buy, we bought some on Friday and again today is $1.20. Most of us have our averages on the rebuy down around five bucks a share. Some are less than that, especially our newbies that are in there buying for the first time right now. We have over 400 strong inside of a private Discord community. And if you're somehow just crawling out from under a rock, we made a fortune back in May. We were buying the stock for over a year, all the way down to four cents. And we sold it somewhere around 25 to 30 cents on its way up and through 60. We then made the mistake of rebuying the stock. And in and around the June 5th article from Benzinga, which I'm going to refer to in a second, we sold 20% of the stock on the announcement of the one for 150 reverse split and the 300 million shares they gave away to the Keystone Cops, a.k.a. Keystone Capital. But there's something that doesn't add up here, folks. Because if we're to assume, and I do believe these numbers this time are real, they've already been sued a couple of times. I do not think that Doug is going to make the mistake this time of fabricating numbers and or fudging around uh, timing of the contracts. They've already pushed out once again the smart insert window biz, another three to six months if you would read between the lines. It's not going to have a full bore rollout until 2025 late or early 2026. The beta version is supposed to start before the end of this year, but the product's not going to be ready to ship across the country and around the world until, in terms of its full scale, 2026. But guess what? They don't even need it. This is a $100 million business in the making between Element 82, which had a $10 million deal that I'm going to refer to last Thursday. You got another $33 million from the lead remediation business that starts on the first of the year in terms of production. You've got what Boaz has done, which is north of $10 million in terms of fiber optics and laying pipe. Add all that together at a 10 to 15% margin, which is conservative because they outsource most of their employment in terms of digging the wells and the ditches to a third party. That's my business for over 11 years. From 2007 until I left corporate America in 2019, I was in the commercial and retail sales outsourcing biz, and we had some construction-related contracts. That's usually at least a 10 or 15% margin. So if we assume 50 million with the 33 million they just added, at 15%, that's 7.5 million to the bottom line. 
even on the fully diluted two and a half million supplement from, yeah, I know I gave you a lot of things, but I'm going to go over it from the 13th of this month, fully diluted right now. They have somewhere around seven or eight, seven and a half or eight million shares tops. And it would be nice if we'd get an answer other than we can't tell you that, right? I see some of you have already re reached out after Jason told a number of you, we don't have an ELOC anymore. Really? Wouldn't it have been nice to fucking tell me? I've done a half a dozen or more, probably a dozen videos talking about the ELOC. And while I do maintain that the CEO of this company lacks credibility, and that's why we're a whisker away from an all-time low, I am going on record once again of saying it's fucking remarkable what they've done as a team to go from knocking on Chapter 11's door a year ago because the smart insert window biz was not ready for rollout to 50 on its way, in my opinion, to 100 million within two years, in large part because, as they said in the today's uh, news release, they're just scratching the surface in terms of lead remediation. There's lead pipes all over the fucking world, let alone this country, that need to be replaced and or repaired. The only thing that's holding this stock back is dilution. But we were now told, in case you didn't hear me for th the third time, on Friday there is no more ELOC. So, Doug, for the life of me, I don't understand why you would sleep, sweep that under the rug. We, we want a shareholder letter. Starting off with, when specifically did the ELOC end? Because, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll uh, pin two articles, the June 5th article from Benzinga, and then the September 13th supplement where they added $2.55 million worth of dilution through their original underwriter, AGE, Alliance Global Partners. So let's start off with the article from June 5th. Again, it's going to be pinned in the comment below. It pointed out the stock at the time was down 17% on the day because they issued 300 million shares to the Keystone Cops, a.k.a. Keystone Capital Partners. And if you read that filing, and it talks about it in this article, Kraken got no proceeds from the offering. So I would love to know, Doug, even though you're not going to tell us, why the fuck did you give away $30 million worth of stock? Was that a payoff? I don't think so. Was it a bribe? I don't think so. It was most likely related to some quarter, sort of contractual loss they may have taken on in issuing $50 million of stock on your behalf through the ELOC, the equity or equipment line of credit, take your pick. But now that Jason told us there is no more ELOC, when specifically did it end? Number one. Number two, why did you give the Keystone Cops 300 million shares, a.k.a. approximately $30 million worth of stock, and take no proceeds from it whatsoever? What was the reasoning for it? We never heard publicly, ladies and gentlemen. And that therein lies the problem with this company. They've turned the corner. They're building a massive pipeline. You're eventually going to get to the smart insert window biz, which, again, they bought from HP Hewlett Packard. This is a fucking monster in the making, but for some reason, the CEO doesn't want to tell us that the biggest overhang in the stock, $50 million worth, which at the time was hundreds of millions of shares of dilution, is done. I see some of you reached out to Jason, and he's saying, I can't tell you. What a surprise. Every time I would ask for an exact share count, can't tell you that. Anytime I would ask for public information, and they should be able to tell you, when did the contract end? You mean to tell me you're going to hide behind some sort of fictitious NASDAQ or SEC rule? You can absolutely positively, in a shareholder letter, say, based on enormous amounts of feedback from our shareholders, we would like to go on record and say that we ended the ELOC, the equity line, the equipment line of credit with Keystone Capital on June and or July such and such. And as a result, and this is another positive, ladies and gentlemen, that goes with a massive pipeline. As per this June 5th article, there was still $36,327,000 in small change of dilution to draw down on. So if it's over, and I presume that means it's been fully uh, drawn upon, they must have another $36 million to go with the June 30 filing of $11.8 I believe. 
In other words, conservatively, even if they got to set aside 10 or 15, 20 million dollars for all these new contracts, they should have 25 or 30 million dollars of cash right now. Why would you not come out and tell your shareholders who have been bent over this fucking desk all the way in and up and out the other side without any lube. Why would you not tell them? You did say in the quarterly that ended June 30, you did say that you you had 11.8 million in financing. You did say that you've exhausted and or gotten rid of the preferred stock, you know, the one you repriced under a nickel. So those that did convert and sold the common at much higher made a bloody motherfucking fortune, but at least it's out of the way. And you also said in the same paragraph, that shareholder equity is up 3x from the same prior year, a year ago. So folks, I'm telling you, as we're sitting here at $1.22 last trade, you have a $50 million plus pipeline. You just added another $33 million that will start construction on the first of this year. You should have at least 10 or 15% margin. You've wiped out all the debt, all the preferred stock, and even before all these fucking deals, shareholder equity as of June 30, and this is in the 10Q, tripled. The only thing that's holding this back, or what I call the CEO's lack of credibility, is their refusal. Now that we know they've gotten rid of the ELOC, this is really fishy if you ask me. Why would you not come out and say it's gone, it's done? We've got a massive pile of cash with an even bigger pipeline. We think we're going to do X number of dollars in terms of top line in 25. We conservatively estimate 10 or 15% margins. And based on the current share count of approximately 7 or 8 million shares, if you put a 20 PE on that, ladies and gentlemen, you have a 7 to $10 stock minimum. But for some reason, they refused to tell us when they ended the ELOC. So everybody watching, you need to call, email, hit them all. Question one, when did you end the ELOC? Because Jason from IR told us, not me, Jason Assad said on Friday, and we have copies, Jason. I don't want to show them to the public. That's not my thing. You and I had a fairly good relationship, and I respect the job you're trying to do in a very tough situation with the stock within a dime of an all-time low. But you guys can't hide behind the fucking NASDAQ rule bullshit. If you're publicly telling in writing shareholders that there is no more ELOC, and you did, then you're publicly allowed to tell them when it ended. Even if you can't give us an exact time and date, tell us Ju June, July, it's over. Question number two, that must mean that you drew down all of the 50 million, 36 million was remaining as of June 5th's article, Yes or no? If you can tell us it's over, it must mean that you exhausted the $50 million drawdown. If you didn't, when did you cancel it? And how much money do you currently have? Now, they're going to hide behind all these fucking fictitious rules. They can absolutely ballpark. They can put out a shareholder letter tomorrow that says, we ended our relationship with Keystone Capital and the $50 million ELOC on this date or this month. As a result of the relationship that we had, we currently have approximately, you don't have to give us an exact number, approximately X number of dollars in cash. And they can absolutely, and they've already done it in numerous shareholder letters, give us a full projection now with this $33 million, and I think it's north of $50 million now, in terms of top line, and how about an estimate in terms of bottom line? You told us in the last conference call you were going to be net income positive by the fourth quarter of this year. Well, we're heading into it right now. And this pipeline is at least three or four times the size it was when you fucking told us that three or four months ago. So I am telling you, I understand people that are pissed off. I understand if you're, you're irritated, you've gotten bent over the desk, you're pissed, you know, you lost a lot of money on the rebuy like we did, but you deserve answers. And they can be vague enough and broad enough to put to bed the biggest concern because if it's out of the way, we don't have to worry about another 36 million as of June 5th of dilution because it's been exhausted and they got a big pile of cash with a fat pipeline. All that we have left, and I'll put the filing from uh, September the 13th below is a supplemental, an additional $2.55 million worth of equity through their original company, AGP, Alliance Global Partners, that brought them public a few years ago. 
Now, the obvious question is, okay, if the ELOC is gone and you pulled down another $36 million since June 5th, why the fuck did you need another $2.5 million or thereabouts with your original underwriter? Not Keystone, AGP. Answer? Maybe it's a favor. Maybe they have some institutions. Maybe it's for themselves. They wanted to get the stock at a buck and a quarter or less. I don't know the answer to that. But this much I do know, folks. If $50 million of ELOC dilution is out of the way, and I personally think they sold most of the two and a half million last Thursday. Remember in the pre-market, we were at 193. The stock was up 50% plus, And then by the 930 open, we were flat. That is not retail selling down from 190 to where it is now at 120 and change. That is dilution. So let's assume half to most, even after today, when it was 138 and got knocked down, let's assume most of the 2.55 million they filed to sell 10 days ago is gone. That would mean 90% plus of the dilution that's been hanging over this stock for the last six to nine months is gone. So in closing, Doug, what's stopping you from doing what's right and telling shareholders exactly where we motherfucking stand? I have sat here for the last three or four hours looking through every filing, every news announcement, I haven't seen an answer as to when the ELOC ended. And again, we were told that in writing by Jason in IRR. He's not going to tell us. He's going to hide behind this SEC. It's non-public bullshit. You can't tell people you don't have an ELOC anymore and not tell them approximately when it ended. And how much of the remaining $36 million, which was public information on June 5th, did you draw down on? I have to assume all of it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone away, a.k.a. ended. So I sit here and I go, what would be his motivation? He knows I've got hundreds of people in the stock that have lost everything they made money on in May. He knows his stock is within a whisker of going under a dollar again and, and into a potential death spiral and being NASDAQ non-compliant. Why the fuck would he put out all this bullish information and not clarify where they stand with respect to their cash and their dilution? I don't have an answer. So I would like every one of you, when did you end the ELOC? Give us a date. How much money as a result of that do you have in cash? Did you draw down the entire $50 million? And third, why are you not telling the public that this big overhang is largely, if not totally gone? Folks, it's not retail that's been selling every fucking rally. First, it was the ELOC. Now it's the supplemental. But if we have a 50, a 50 plus million dollar pipeline with 25 or 30 million dollars of cash as a result of the ELOC and the supplemental and the ability to earn 10 or 15 percent or thereabouts to the bottom line, then you have a seven to ten dollar stock. Why the fuck, Doug, are you not telling your shareholders that most, if not all of the dilution is out of the way? Why? We'd love an answer. And until next time, always remember, ladies and gentlemen, that I love you, doing the best I can, and thanks for watching.